Hey guys, and welcome back to Boomer's Playground. I know we usually do the coding exercises from uh, the Web Developer Bootcamp from Colt Steel on the Udemy platform, but we've run out of them, and I was going to start doing like Code Wars, like the katas there. It'd be kind of fun. You kind of learn together, show you guys my process. And then I noticed a lot of people were asking about exercises in the Odin Project. And I was familiar with the Odin Project, and I didn't do the Odin project, or I, I think I started it like five, six years ago, but it's, it's less handholdy. And at that time, I had a hard time thinking analytically. So I needed something that was a little more direct and the Udemy, the courses on Udemy tend to be that way. This is far more Here's what you need to do. You're kind of on your own, figure it out. If you can do that, I think you'll come out the other end a better programmer because that's the big thing you lack when you're taking a course, like a video course that has everything kind of laid out for you is you're not doing the searching. Um, you know, you're not, you're not having to think differently. Um, but you know, if, if you need a little more help, um, those, those Udemy courses are perfectly acceptable or even just like find an hour long video on YouTube for like HTML and then find another one for CSS and then find one for JavaScript and then maybe jump into this. Cause I really do, um, like the Odin project or at least what I'm seeing from what it's asking. And it is nice cause it has uh, full stack Ruby on rails, which don't listen to anybody. Ruby on rails is still out there. Um, it's not the new hotness like JavaScript is, um, but there's definitely jobs out there. And if you want to get into the freelance market, Ruby on Rails is huge. Ruby on Rails and Django. I'm not a big fan of Django though. Also at work, our backend language is a version of Ruby and I want to be more, I want to be able to do more stuff at work pretty much, but we will go through the JavaScript one. Um, but first you got to start through the foundations. And this is, uh, you know, how does this work? Asking for help, blah, blah, blah. Join the Odin community. There's probably a Discord for it. Um, install, blah, blah. Um, introduction to Git, HTML. I'm not going to do the HTML or the CSS um, exercises. Sorry. Um, I just don't, I don't care for CSS and HTML. <laughs> um, I'm just going to start with the JavaScript one. So you'll get here. You'll do some fundamentals, some dev tools, some more fundamentals. You'll problem solve walk through some errors. And then your first project is going to be rock, paper, scissors, which I'm a huge fan of. So here's just a little intro. If you don't know how it's played, it's an old game that you learn when you're young, go to the article, read how it works. You have what essentially what it is, is you and a friend, you, you go rock, paper, scissors, shoot. And then with your hand, you do the symbol for rock, paper, or scissors. And then, you know, whoever won, so like if you pick rock and your friend picks paper, paper covers rock and beats it. So they'll like cover your hand. It's like, it's a fun little game. Um, the first thing they want you to do is quick exercises before starting, identify three ways to include JavaScript in a page, test it out with console log. I mean, I guess we don't, I mean, okay, screw it. Let's, yeah, we can do this one. That's fine. Okay, so we got this here. Let's just make our directory. I'll get in there and then we'll do make our files. All right. And so I use lunar vim. It's like a, it's a, an IDE on top of vim, which is a terminal based editor. Do not switch what you're using now because you see me using this. Um, I was very fortunate when I started at the company I'm at now, we were very small and my boss was like, please try vim. If you don't like it, you can switch, but please try it. He had it set up for me and I freaking love it. An ex Apple engineer who I'm friends with told me that somebody had told him along his career path that one hour, th 30 minutes to one hour a week, you pick a tool that you use every day and you spend that 30 minutes to an hour and you learn how to use that tool better. And I've done that with Slack and I've done that with Vim and I've gotten really good with both. And so I don't care what editor you're using. You could be using Notepad++, you could be using WebStorm, you could be using um, you know, VS Code, Atom, Sublime. 
do that. Now, maybe at the beginning, start like every two weeks because you really want to get into the coding. Um, but do that, and you will be just as fast in your editor as it seems like I am in mine. So um, get that out of the way. Let's get these two files open. And I don't know if I have, oh, sweet, snippet. All right, we'll get, oh, we want a title. Come on, guys. It's our first game. Got to make this super pretty. Um, and then we don't need this because that's we're not going to have any styling. It's There's no page to it. Okay, so it says three ways. I know of two main ones, and I'm wondering, I think I know what the third might be, but, um, oh. So the first thing, the first way to do it, and the first way that a lot of people will learn when they're new is you just put a script tag at the bottom of the, um, your body, you put it right before the closing body tag, and then, Then we can jump in the console, and you'll see we have hell, hello world there. Um, this is fine at the beginning, but just imagine if you had like a couple hundred lines of code of JavaScript and a couple hundred lines of code of HTML, um, which all your HTML is like in here, right? You know, like H1, all my HTML. So um, I, I don't think you'll ever see this in production. Um, but at the beginning, it's fine. But what you'll not, what you'll often see is this, and this is the way that I oh, this is the way that I do it. This is the way that everybody at my job does it. And then you just come into your file. And you do hello world, and we'll add exclamation points so you guys know it's not just the same one. And you'll see we got it there. Um, I think the other one that they consider a third way is you can put it in your head. Um, but the issue with this is it um, HTML and JavaScript and CSS run top to bottom, right? So if you have a smaller HTML file, what happens is, is it reads this line, 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 and then it comes down and it draws the page. Well, let's say in your JavaScript, you are trying to grab something on the DOM. And then we'll just console log it. You'll see we get null. And you'll be like, oh, what the hell? The button's right there. Well, what's happening is this JavaScript is running before the, the browser has drawn anything. So when this JavaScript runs and you try and grab this button, the button doesn't exist. So I think you can do like async. Yep, and it fixes that, or you can do like defer. Um, yeah, so those would work, but like I've just been doing it long enough that I just keep it down here. It just makes it easier for me, but use whatever you'd like. It really doesn't matter. Another thing I've seen recently, which I seem to be seeing a lot in like videos and stuff, is you can also do, you can also do this. And there's a event fired once all the DOM has been loaded and drawn. And so anything in here will only run after that's happened. But like I said, I just put it at the bottom right before the, the last body tag. And really, when you get into frameworks, um, this is not going to be an issue. But this is 100% something you should know. So um, I'm just going to keep it like that. So, All right, so that's our setup. Let's see what we got here. So, so we did that. Um, commit early and often. I'm not gonna do a branch and commit. Um, you guys should get in the habit, but I'm not gonna. All right, we've created our blank file. We've linked our external JS. See, it's just such second nature. I didn't even need to read this yet. And then it's gonna be played straight from the console. So we don't need to put anything in the HTML or any like prettiness. So your game is going to play against the computer. So begin with a function called computer play that will randomly return either rock, paper, or scissors. All right. So we got const computer play. And that's not going to take any parameters. And if you guys are unfamiliar with ES6 or arrow functions, 
I'm not sure what how the Odin project teaches, but um, at this level in your learning, these two functions are the exact same thing. So just know that as I'm going through this. So here we're going to have an array. We'll do R of choices, and that's going to be rock. Oh my lord, paper, scissors. And then it said randomly select these. So anytime I hear randomly select, I immediately go check out math.random. It's built into JavaScript, the math object is, and then it has this method. And so the math.random math .random function returns a floating point, which that just means it's a number with decimals. It's pseudo random because um, it's a, it's a program, so it technically can't be completely random, um, but it is, it is random enough that you can use this in almost every situation that you need a random number. Um, and you'll get a number in the range of zero to less than one. So this is really important. So it's inclusive of zero, which means you can get zero, but you'll never get one. The highest you'll ever get is 0 0.9999999 and however many decimal points out it goes. And so you'll see we have this um, function that they're showing here where you wrap, you wrap math.random times whatever the max number you want is, and then you floor it. And so for our instance, um, and this is kind of confusing, so it says max, but you're really going to get one less than the max. And so what you'll often see is, so you have math.random, you know, 0 0.16, 0 0.45, 0 0.63, 0 0.20, 0 0.22, 0 0.39, 0 0.05, 0 0.21. So again, you could get zero, but you'll never get one. The most you'll ever get is this. So if you math.floor this, you're always going to get zero because it's always going to be zero point something. And math.floor just takes that number and rounds down. So if we did, if we did, uh, math.floor of that point, you know, whatever, it's going to give us 12,312. So what you'll see a lot of times is if, if you want the number six, you'll see math.floor, math.random times six, but this is only going to give you up to five, and then they'll add one. And then this can get you up to six. So we don't care um, about that part. We want zero to two. So I'm just gonna use three and we'll get zero, one, or two, which is perfect. Because if you remember, arrays are indexed at zero. So rock is R of choices zero, paper is R of choices one, scissors is R of choices two. So let's see. Yeah, so if we do math that Floor. We'll do math at random, and a lot of times I'll play around in the console just to make sure I'm getting what I expect. So here we get two, zero, two, one, zero, one, one, two. All right, so that looks like that's gonna work. So let's do, we'll do cost, we'll do random num. It's gonna be math at floor, math at random times three. And then, um, so this random number will give us zero, one, or two, and we wanna get a random choice. So that will just be, well, I mean, let's make sure it is what we think it is. So it'll be R of choices, random num. Yeah, okay. Okay, and we're not getting anything. And I know you guys are probably yelling at me through the screen. The reason is this function is created but it's never been run yet. So this the code right here is just hanging out and it's waiting for you to call it. So we'll do a computer play. Now this is actually calling that code. So now we'll get rock, rock, scissors, paper. So we are getting all three. So we can do const, um, comp choice and that will be our of choices and random num. And then we can return comp dot or comp choice. All right, so let's console log, computer play, and make sure we are still getting what we expect. So scissors, 
rock, paper, rocks, paper, paper, scissors. Okay, so that is giving us what we expect. So step one is done. So let's see what the next step is. So now we're going to write a function that plays a single round of rock, paper, scissors. The function should take two parameters, the player selection and computer selection, and then returns a string that declares the winner of the round, like so. You lose, and then whatever the choices were. A little addendum here, make sure the player selection parameter is case insensitive. So you can put any type of upper or lower cases. All right? So we'll do play around, and we're going to do a parameter. So this will be player selection, do computer selection. And just remember, parameters are just um, placeholders. You're just saying, hey, when I call you, I'm going to give you two things. So this is called creating a function. This would be calling the function. And then you have to give it the two parameters, and you separate them by a comma. All right, so we got this. And then so we pretty much just have to see, we have to account for every iteration of this. So. Um, let's just start, and let's just start with the ties. So if you picked rock and the computer picked rock, we'll return you tied, you both picked rock. All right. We'll do else if, and then we can do rock. I wonder if there's, I bet you I can do. Well, well, that's not what I wanted. Sometimes there was a way to like highlight and select all of the versions of this, but I'll just, I'll figure that out on my own time. Paper. All right, and then now we got to worry about all the other ones. So we'll do. So let's just say we'll just start with scissors. And you can you can clump these together how you like, but I would. In my head, I just like to keep them together so that I don't miss any. And then we'll be able to rock. Say you suck, you lost, rock crushes scissors. And here we'll do this is do paper. Do paper. Paper cuts rock, or cuts rock, cuts, wow. Scissors cuts paper. And here we'll do, so that was scissors, scissors. So then we can do rock, and we'll do paper. And you lost paper covers rock. Scissors. Change this to you one. So rock, rock, scissors, scissors. So now I just need paper. And this one will do you lost. Scissors cuts paper. So yeah, this one is actually you won. And you won rock crushes scissors. You lost scissors cuts paper. I think there's one more. Is that right? Because it'll be paper and rock. And then 
Park, and then you'll win. You won. Paper covers rock. So what is that? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's all nine. So paper rock, you win. Paper scissors, you lose. Rock scissors, you win. Rock paper, you lose. Scissors paper, you win. Scissors rock, you lose. Tie, tie, tie. Okay, cool. Okay, so I think that's all of them. Um, all right, so uh, important note, you want to return the results of this function call, not console log. So all right, let's just copy all this stuff right here. And we'll paste that. And I don't like double quotes, so we'll do that. We'll do that, and we'll do this. And I don't know if you guys noticed this or not, but Um, and no highlight. One thing that we, and I think they might have done this on purpose, is if you'll notice up here, these are uppercase, whereas in all of our instances, we're lowercase because we want to be case insensitive. So they need to be the same case because if you have any uppercases, those are different character codes according to JavaScript. So we need them to be the same. So we actually need this to be lowercase. And I'm I'm fairly confident they put it, they put this, the ones up here in uppercase um, for that reason. Where was that? Oh yeah, so right here, rock, paper, or scissors, and they uppercase them. I'm pretty sure that's why, which is which is good because this is a good thing to know. So let's make sure that we're getting what we expect. So let's see. Oh, missing line 34. Oops, we're missing a couple guys there. All right. All right, so you lost paper covers rock. You lost paper covers rock. You tied, you both pick rock. You lost paper covers rock. You tied, and we won. Okay, so we got all three instances, so I think we're doing good. Oh my gosh, how do you I want to stop the highlight, no highlight H. All right, there we go. Okay. All right, so I think that's working, so that's good. So here, write a new function called game. Call the play run function inside of this one to play five round game that keeps score and reports a winner and loser at the end. All right, so that's the loop that we'll want to use. And it says we're going to keep score, so let's um, let's just do a let. And these, these have to be lets because we're going to re- we're going to um, add to them, current score, sorry, comp score, that'll be zero. And then it wants us to do a function called game. There's no parameters, so we'll just do this. And then we're going to loop over. I is a five, I plus plus. And then here, it just wants us to do pretty much this. And then we'll call it here. And then we need to add to the player. Or well, let's just let's just make sure this part is working. And then we'll worry about updating the, the users. You tied you pith. Okay, so this is happening five times and we're getting the same pick. Okay, so that's really weird. Oh, I accidentally commented that out for some reason. Okay, maybe, no, I don't think that's why. Okay, so we're still getting the same thing five times in a row, right? So we see the five there and it's the same thing. That is super unrealistic, so let's see what we're getting for the player selection and the computer selection. So we're getting rock for all those, which is fine because it's we have that hard-coded, but this should be random. But we're getting 
paper for each one there, paper for each one there, scissors for each, okay, so we're gonna be the same one each time. And so this is a great, um, this is a good intro to how JavaScript runs. So JavaScript runs top to bottom. So what happens here is it's like, hey, set a couple of variables, whatever. All right, here's a function, here's some stuff. All right, that's ready to roll, whatever. Same thing here, just whatever. Same thing, we're just creating a variable here. And then here we're running this and we're running computer play, which is up here. And so this is gonna give us a random selection and it's gonna set that equal to computer selection. Then we're gonna come into game. We're gonna get that ready. Okay, cool, it's ready to roll. And then we're calling game. So what happens is we come into game and we're looping. Well, this, this value never changes because we called it one time and one time only up here and we're just passing that same thing in every single time. So I'm gonna take a drink. I want you guys to pause the video and I want you to think, how can we make this run every time we call the play round in this instance and get, give us a new value? Exactly. We put it in the loop. And so now each time this loops over, we're gonna get a new computer selection. So let's check it. And now you'll see we get paper, scissors, 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 rock. So we are now getting a new, well, you know, it's, it's running itself each time through the loop. Okay, sweet. So we kind of got that solved. So what's the next part? Well, we actually have to do the, let's add and subtract to the player. So here we can just do tie, 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 don't care, don't care, you lost. So that would be comp score plus plus and if you're not familiar with what this plus plus is it is the same thing as comp score equals comp score plus one you can also do comp score minus minus and then that's the same thing as comp score equals comp score minus one so you'll see these you rarely see it written out like like this it's almost always going to be in this um, shorthand because you're a programmer and that means you're lazy and you don't like to do stuff over and over and over again. And then same thing, plus plus. Okay. And then now what we wanna do is we just want to, so this for loop will happen. The loop is gonna happen and then it's gonna run five times and then after that's done, it's gonna come down here. And now we're just gonna check who won. So we'll do if player score, and it's pretty straightforward, right? Player score is greater than comp score. We'll return, you beat the computer. You are a genius. And then else player score is less than comp score. It's actually else if we'll return you got beat by the computer. Practice your throws. And so throw if you don't know what throws are, it's just um it's like slang or it's like short. It's a in the Midwest, that's what we said, because you you do rock, paper, scissors, and then you throw your your choice. You use your hand to like show what it is. So, and then we'll just do an else because there's only three instances you could possibly have here. You could be better, computer could be better, or you guys could be tied. So we'll just do turn. You tie with the computer, not too shabby. All right, so let's do this. So we'll do console.log and let's see if this is still getting it. You got beat by the computer, practice your throws, you tied, you got beat, you beat the computer, perfect. So we got all three, but that's just with a static player selection. So what's the next step here? Um, okay, so we're good there. So that wants us to use prompt. So let's jump over here. So prompt instructs the browser to display a dialogue with an optional message, prompting the user to input some text. 
and then it waits until the user submits the text or cancels the dialog. Okay. So we have just prompt, we have prompt and a message, and we have prompt, message, and a default. So the message is a string of text to display to the user. Can be omitted if there's nothing to show in the prompt window. Default is a string containing the default value displayed in the text input field. Um, note, there's some Internet Explorer stuff, um, but 7 and 8, I don't think you'll run into that. I don't think those are supported anymore. So um, this is one thing I didn't do when I was learning, and I highly encourage you all to do this, is I would come in here, I would read this, and I'd be like, sweet, this is what I need, peace, I'm out. Um, when you're looking at the documentation, read the documentation. For a while, it's not going to make the best sense, but you're, you're just training your brain to like to start thinking a little differently. So um, let's grab this guy and then let's, um, it's gonna be the player selection now. So we're gonna wanna do the same thing. We want it down here because we want a new selection each time. And then this will be, um, choose what to throw. And then I'm not really sure what this one is, but let's just do yo and we'll see. Okay, choose what to throw. Okay, and then the yo is what's in here. Okay, perfect. So let's do, um, let's do rock, paper, scissors. Okay, so we're gonna, okay. Oh, I like that. Okay, cool, so let's do, let's do rock. And actually, let's do, um, let's do this again where we console log this so we can see what each game is in case we have any errors. Oh, we got undefined, but not for that one. Okay, paper's fine, okay. That one's not, okay. Scissors isn't, okay. So I'm sure you guys are yelling at me, per usual. Um, whatever the user types is what we're putting in this player selection. And so if I type rock with a capital R, it's not gonna match a single thing in this function because they're all lowercase. So. What we need to do is we need to find out how to lowercase a JavaScript, how to lowercase in JavaScript. How do you lowercase in JavaScript? And W3Schools is fine, but I'll go to MDN. We have this to lowercase. And so you'll see to lowercase takes everything in a string and makes every single thing lowercase. So what we can do is we could do something like you know, lower player selection and just do player selection dot to lowercase. We could even just do to lowercase here. But what I like to do is I just like to handle it right at the, the gate. So a lot of times with these methods, with these built-in methods, you can chain them together like this. And we're gonna to get to the final solution. And if you guys are done with it at that point, you can leave, but I'm gonna go back and we're gonna refactor some of this stuff. So, all right, so let's see what happens here. All right, so we're gonna do gonna refresh, we'll do rock, we'll do rock. Oh crap, I should've kept this. Sorry. All right, all right so we'll do capital rock. Okay, that's the one. Rock. Okay, so our two lowercase is definitely working, which is awesome. Oof. That computer was a tough one. Okay, so it looks like everything's working fine here. So let's get rid of this and let's just try without the console logs, except for at the game one. So here we'll do rock, paper, rock, scissors, rock. Oh, and it beat us. Okay, so let's try it again. So we'll do rock, rock, scissors, rock, rock. And we beat the computer. All right, so let's see if we can tie. Scissor, rock, scissor. Beat the computer. Okay, well, we're getting two of the three, so I think that's fair to say this is pretty good. So, um, yeah, so I think that satisfies all the tests here. Um, if that's all you cared about, feel free to um, end the video here. That's perfectly fine. Um, 
like, share, and subscribe. Share this with other Discord groups. Share this with people who are looking for help. Um, keep, leave me comments. Leave me feedback. I love seeing all the questions when I'm not clear on something or, you know, just some confusion. Um, I love seeing the people that this helps. And so as long as I keep seeing that stuff, I'm going to keep doing these and we're going to do more ex exercises and like code wars and all that stuff. So um, if you're, if you just wanted the answer, feel free to bounce. Um, otherwise I'm going to use the bathroom super quick and then um, we're going to go over and we're going to see if we can't uh, re refactor this a little bit. So um, if you guys are staying, I'll see you in a minute. If you're not, enjoy, have a good night, like, share, and subscribe, and share with all the people you know. Okay, guys. <clears throat> if you're still here, thanks for staying. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me for a little bit longer. Um, so let's let's go through, and this is something I like to do, and I like to, to have the people that I mentor do. And especially with, like, when you go to, like, the Code Wars or Elite Code or any of those coding challenge sites, is the first... And foremost thing you need to do is you need to get it working. The code is going to be ugly. It's going to be spaghetti code. And not that you should care, but it's probably not going to be the most performant thing. And again, and all of that is perfectly fine. You're new. You're learning. But once you get it to satisfy all the tests, I would like you guys to go back, go over, and see if there are any areas you can make a little better. Now, for a little bit, you're, you're probably not gonna find much, if anything, and that's okay. Those first steps are gonna be more along the lines of kind of um, warming up your brain. Think of it like working out a muscle, right? You don't go to the gym and put three plates you know, on either side and start working out. You gotta warm up, and then you start with a small plate, and you do that for a couple days. Then you move up and you get a bigger plate so on, so on, and then you, you're adding more, you're adding more. That's what this is. You're training your brain, which is a muscle, and we're just starting off small. So again, when you go back, you will likely not find much to fix for a while, and that's okay. You're just training that, the brain. So, um, so let's start at the top, and let's, uh, let me grab a quick drink here, and then we'll, uh, we'll see what we can fix. Okay, so... The first two lines, yeah, whatever. Not a, not a whole lot you can do here. We could do this, and it's the exact same thing. Um, actually, I normally don't like this, but that's okay. Yeah, let's do that again. Um, it's not a I, not a super big deal, but whatever. Now you we'll still you see we still get rock, 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 rock. And we tied. So let's do another one to make sure. So we'll do rock. Come on. Rock, paper, scissors, scissors, paper. All right, hold on. Maybe that doesn't work. I thought that worked. I just don't think we would tie that many times in a row. It's possible, but. Okay, so we lost. And then we won. We lost. We lost again. So what's that? So we should be at one and they should be at three. Okay, so hold on, that is... So maybe that doesn't work, what the heck? Undefined in zero. Okay, um... Apparently you can't do that. I thought for sure you could. Am I just doing it wrong? Let's find out. Let's see. 
that is Oh, okay, you see what I did wrong there? Maybe that's why I don't like it. So, but so see, that's just that just goes to show. I'm coming up on 4 years now and I'm still just like, "Oh, what?" So, it would it would be this. And so that's why I don't like it. I don't really care for that, so I'm going to keep it like this. Um, but again, you could really do either one. Um, so those are fine there. And then here the function can't really do much there. The array can't really do much there. This is an area that I would like us to adjust, though. So this works perfectly fine for us. But let's say um, the array was being passed in as a parameter. We would have no idea how long that array is. So, using us using they're called magic numbers when you use like a, a regular number. Um, you know, this directly correlates to the array, and so when the array changes, this needs to change. So you have this extra step and this extra area for a bug. So what you can do is, in JavaScript, you can call. I'm just gonna do. Uh, You can call length on an array and it will give you the human readable length. And the reason I say human readable is indexes start at zero. So the one is actually at the zeroth index, two is actually at the first index, and three is actually at the second index. But if you asked a, a normal person, <laughs> normal seems weird, if you asked a person who's not into programming and said count these out, they would say one, two, three, not because of the numbers, but because of, you know, Let's say it was actually this. You know, they would still they would still count one, two, two, three. So, so using dot length is a good tool, but you have to remember it's always going to be one more than there are spots in the array. And the reason that matters is if we were to go, you know, a dot a dot length, we're going to get an error because there is no a three. So um, keep that in mind, but that can be helpful here because we actually want the number three. So if we just do r of choices dot length, we now have this dynamic. If we change this and we add, you know, lizard and Spock, we don't have to change this. This just works out of the out of the gate. So that's why I think that's a really good change. It's a really good benefit. And then it's a nice little tool for you guys to, to think of when you're programming. Um, this one is fine as well, but all we're doing here is we're creating a, a variable just to return it. If that's the case, um, just return the thing itself. So we can just do return here. So. If, all, if you're assigning something to a variable and the only other thing you're doing with it is returning it, um, yeah, just, just do this. You can do this, and I, I really can't think of a time when this would not work. Um, I'm sure there are some instances out there, but at this level, um, probably not something you have to worry about. So now this is our big beefy boy right here. So 27 lines of code. Not a super lot in the grand scheme of things, but it is still a lot of code. So when I go back on stuff like this, what I think about is, okay, let me find all the things that are doing the same thing. They're doing something really, really similar. And how can I make, how can I kind of make them shorter? So right out of the gate, the first three things are all the same. They're ties. And if we think about it, what makes a tie a tie in this instance? Well, it's if the player selection and the computer selection are the same. So if you think about what I just said, if the player selection and the computer selection are the same, it's a tie. Why are we even checking what their, what their choice was? We can just do if the player selection equals the computer selection. We don't actually care what the selection is, we just care that they're the same. So that gets rid of that. And 
Now we're down to 23 lines of code. I get it, four lines isn't huge, but think about this. This is, look at all this area where we could make a typo and cause an error. We could make a syntax error. We've cut all of that out now. And yes, I've, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. What about this part? We wanna know what was selected. Well, this is where string template literals come into play. And if you're not familiar with those, just Google them. But what it is is you, you wrap the thing, your string, around with back ticks, which they're the key above the tab, key on the left side of the keyboard. And this is on a US keyboard. I'm not familiar with other um, ones. So if you guys are from a different area that doesn't have the, the back tick there, share where it is and what keyboard um, format you have or, or what, nationalize, what nationality the keyboard is. And then the way that this works is anything that's not wrapped in a dollar sign in the curly brackets is treated as a string. So all of this is still just a regular string, but anything we put in here will be JavaScript. So we can put player selection and that will print whatever the player selection was. And we could put computer selection as well, um, but it's the same one, so we don't care. So like, um, let's see, so we'll do const a, we'll do boomers playground, and then, oh my gosh, dang. I always forget this thing remembers forever, boomers playground. And then here, and then here we can just do, we'll do const d, you are watching a video from that. And we get, you are watching a video from Boomer's Playground because this C is just, a, is just JavaScript. And so what is C in JavaScript? It's the string of Boomer's Playground. And then it treated everything else outside of those curly brackets and the dollar sign as a regular string. So let's, um, let's see if we can get a tie. Or not. Okay, cool. So you'll see you tied, you both picked, and it shows us rock. Paper. What? Am I missing something here? What happened there? Okay, I did not pick rock, I picked paper. Okay, what did I break? All right, so it's time to go back in here. Three, and so see, this is what I'm saying. I, I, I'm not gonna edit this so that it's perfect and that I don't make any mistakes because this is what programming is really like. So one was paper. Okay, so now you'll see it's working perfect. And so, but we got this picked paper. So there must have been, there must have just been something tied up in the browser or whatever. Oh, and we both picked scissors, so cool. So you'll see that, um, so the, the string template literals is working, which is awesome. So now let's look at the rest. So there's a lot of these that are similar. You know, we have the ones where the computer wins and the player wins. And I'm thinking about it. And anything that I can think of to refactor this is just gonna make it harder to read or possibly, um, it's just not gonna make it any better. So I'm gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna show one cool little trick just to show you that it's a cool little trick. Um, but I would not use it in this instance. So, um, so I think we're done with this one. And then in here, we don't really have anything here. I guess the one thing you could do, but I personally don't like it, is instead of player selection, we could uh, we could actually do we could actually do the full prompt thing and put it in here. And then same with this, we could do computer play. Um, but I don't like that, looks ugly. And also um, if you're having troubles, this is just easier to troubleshoot when they're their own variable. So 
Um, I think that's really the only additional stuff we could really do. Um, I think the couple that we changed are really nice because these are things that you're going to see in real life um, that will benefit you. So, um, so that's kind of it. Um, here's the one stupid thing I was thinking of that you could probably do is, so if, if the player selection is scissors, and we're going to use string template literals again. All right, so if that's that, so what we could do is you can do, um, you can do a ternary operator. And so if we've selected scissors, and so a ternary operator, I'm not sure if they taught them to you guys yet, but it's um, it's a shorthand way of doing an if else statement. So it's it's only if you it's only an if or else. You can't do any else ifs. You can chain them together, but they look ridiculous. Um, those aren't bad examples, but let's just do one in the console for fun. So um, let's say you were writing an app for a bar, and the um, in America you have to be 21 to go to a bar. Um, so we're, we're going to assume that's the case for this instance. Um, I know I know a lot of, I think we're like the only ones that do that, and that's ridiculous. But we're just going to assume that for now. So we'll do age is going to be 20. And so what you can do is you can say, it, this is literally saying if age is greater than 21, that's literally what it's saying, you'll do this question mark. And if this is true, you're going to do this first thing, which we could do um, just like, you know, you can drink, yay. And then you do a colon, and then if it's false, this other thing I'm saying, you can't, you can't drink, go home. And so you'll see age is 20, so this is false, so the second part runs. And then if we do the same thing again, and we'll just do, um, do age one, we'll do, oh, sorry age one, const age one, and we'll set that equal to 21, and then we'll do, do this again. And you'll see, oh, it's because, <laughs> it's because it did greater than 21, not greater than and equal to. So that's actually a bug, that's on my, that's on me. So you'll see this is a truthy value because age one is 21, so you can drink. So what I'm thinking is we could do, if the player selection is scissors, we could say if the comp, the computer selection equals paper. Oh, and you know what, this isn't even gonna work because we still need to do this player score thing. Um, but what, what I was thinking was we could do, if the computer selected paper and we had scissors, we would return, let me put a return here. Um, you would do um, U1 scissors cuts paper. Otherwise, if they didn't select paper, the only other option would be rock, and then you put, you lose rock crushes scissors. So I was thinking we could do this to kind of shorten it a little bit, but the problem with that is, remember when you do return, it breaks out of the, the function, and we don't have anywhere to do player or comp score plus plus, because we won't know which one is true until this is run. So that's just kind of a cool little turn. Your operators are really cool. They do shorten up your code a lot. Um, we use them a lot at work, but um, and that just goes to show. I thought that might work, and when we started implementing it, we found out it wouldn't. So we're back to the old way. So. But I think that's it for now. Um, nice, little, nice little refactor, this whole length thing, making it more dynamic, the returns. And then this one I really like because we were doing the same thing three times and we really didn't need to. So um, if you guys stayed with this, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. I hope you guys learned something. Um, like I said, um, you know, if, you have, if you're on a Discord or you have friends who are looking for help, feel free to share this channel. Um, I love seeing all the reviews, or uh, I love seeing all the comments of this helping you guys get through stuff. Um, I love the feedback. I love the corrections. I love you guys pointing out the things that you do or don't like. 
Um, so please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.